all alone sitting there and doing the namasmarana suddenly i saw a black man coming from far he came he said follow me he said he showed me an empty bus and he told get into it without telling me a single word this man started driving off in full speed and suddenly in the middle of the road he stops he puts the brake and say in that distance he showed that is your hotel i don't want to come and said you get down here he says i got down from the bus when i turned back there was no bus there was no driver this is the fact this is the amazing thing god can do i remembered a story told by swami he says whatever happens in your life think that it is for your good definitely good will come out of it my most prayerful salutations at the divine lotus feet of my mother sai respected elders and dear sisters and brothers sai ram to all of you wow nice to see such a hall filled full to capacity what a great fortune for me today to be here and they took me to the swami's residence there satyadeep and what a beautiful name the flame of truth and where it is it is in this dharma kshetra in this temple of dharma it is a lighthouse for the all the bombay people it is on the top of the mountain so here for the soleis of the mind you come over here and enjoy the company of the lord so beautifully what a great fortune for me to be here today avijanandi ma mutha manushim tanu maasritam param bhava majananto mai bhuta maheshwaram lord krishna has said in bhagavad gita just because i am in a human garb foolish people think that i am just like one among them they don't realize the fact that i am the lord of the universe it is verily true bhagavan even today in your case many of us had the close association with you we took you for granted we thought that this is the form is going to be with us all the time and never in the history of mankind there was an avatar like satisai avatar how many lives he has touched in this avatar through his selfless love how many lives and it is a unique avatar and the philosophy of satisai avatar he has made an entire section of society to do selfless service for the entire humanity which no avatar could do all the avat other avatars previously they have all come down for vanquishing of the evil through annihilation that is the path they have followed but our beloved bhagavan has taught us to relinquish all the evil through selfless love and this is the path and this is the source and this is the goal and he has given us the greatest opportunity to participate in his greatest mission it was way back 46 years ago i had the greatest good fortune of having the darshan of this beautiful form to be precise it was the 22nd august 
1968, it was a Thursday. That is the day Bhagawan gave me his first darshan back in Prashant Nilayam. To tell me a little bit of my background, I am fortunate enough to born in a very religious, God-fearing family. My father was a staunch follower of Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, the saint of the Trineshwar. And it was during that period of time, around 1963, 64-65, there was an article of Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba in the Illustrated Weekly of India. It was not a very positive article. They were mentioning about the miraculous powers, the so-called miraculous powers of Bhagavan, and it was not a very positive article. And my father, who was a follower of Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, in his work, my father has read somewhere that Siddhas and Yogi should not perform miracles because it comes in the way of their self-realization. So father felt that why this man is wasting away all his spiritual energy without, without working for his own salvation. So from the beginning father did not like Sri Satya Sai Baba. But when God wants to enter your heart, he will find his way and no one can stop him. On that fateful day, father has taken me to the temple in front of our house and we are standing in front of the shrine and when we were praying, our neighbor happened to come there with all the enthusiasm and he said, you know, I went to Puttaparthi, I saw Sai Baba, Sai Baba gave me interview. Father was not at all interested. But to top it all, he took out a book and said, I brought this book for you. Now, not to show disrespect, that also in front of the shrine, Father quietly took the book, he brought it home and he left it there. He never bothered to even look at it. My father was a lawyer by profession and morning he has gone to the court and mother was alone at home. Suddenly she found this one new book. So she started going through the book. She found it very, very interesting. And when father came back home, she asked about the book. Where did you get this? And did you go through it? Father said no. And he was not interested in it. But mother was insistent. Just go through it. It is really nice. But father, just to get rid of the nagging from mother, just casually took the book and opened a page. It was a discourse from our Bhagavan. The paragraph said, Ramakrishna Paramahamsa says Siddhas and Yogi should not perform miracles. <laughs> Neither am I a Siddha nor am I a Yogi. I am the very same Rama and Krishna who has come down as Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba. Whenever God decides, nothing can stop him. And father was shocked. He went through the book and at the end of it, he thought to himself, if whatever is said in this book is true, I should make a visit to Puttaparthi. So there he was, those days he ventured to go to Puttaparthi because it took three days from Kerala to reach Puttaparthi. After reaching there with my eldest brother, Bhagavan, of course, called them for an interview. Straight away, my Swami asked my eldest brother, why did you stop your education? He was doing his final year engineering. Due to some circumstances, he discontinued his education. This was the background. Swami straight away asked, why did you stop your education? Because from God's eye, nothing is concealed. All our lives are open to Him. And Bhagavan said, go, go write your examination. I will be with you. I will grant you the degree. Go. And after the first interview, when father came back to Kerala, he was totally a changed man. 
he felt that god is walking on this earth and it is the bounden duty of every human being to go and have his darshan otherwise they will miss something terrible in their life so he decided my life's aim will be whoever comes i am going to talk about sri satya sai baba so throughout his life whichever stranger comes he used to talk about swami to them and this is how the life started my mother was the happiest person because she has already become the first devotee and what about me i was so small i was hardly 3 4 years old and i can say a bundle of energy very hyper in nature i cannot sit quiet even for a moment mischief to the maximum this was my nature and just to control me because mother could not stand all my demands so she said whatever you want you ask swami you chant om sri sai ram and your wish will be fulfilled really all my wish will be fulfilled i questioned her mother said definitely it will be fulfilled you chant om sri sai ram how many times you want me to chant i cannot go on chanting you tell me how many times i will do that so just to make me keep quiet for some time what she did do she told me chant 108 times so that at least that much time she can bear from me so 108 i was too small to understand what was 108 i asked what is 108 then she thought of a plan she said it is very simple look like this close your fingers 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 each time chanting om sri sai ram and while doing this once you complete a cycle close one finger so it will become 40 50 60 this will become 100 another 8 this is 108 but i thought that i understood it correctly so whenever i wanted something what I used to do, I used to do Om Sri Sai Ram 10 in these fingers, Om Sri Sai Ram another 10 in this finger, and 8. This 28 used to be my 108. <laughs> Believe me, anything I thought I wanted, it happened. Miracles used to happen. And those were the days we very frequently we used to go to Prashanti Nilayam. And whenever we used to go to Puttaparthi, there is one desire that we should have an interview with Bhagavan. And whenever I felt the day we should have an interview with Bhagavan, 28 times Om Sri Sai Ram, rest assured, Swami used to call for an interview. But at the same time, my mischief did not come down. Before, Swami used to come for darshan, and those were the days there is no Sai Kulvand Hall. If we sit in front of the mandir, we could see the Chitravadi river. That is how the whole area was. But I used to play in the sand, throw sand here and there, because it was filled with sand in front of Swami's mandir. And I used to disturb all the devotees next to me. So one day, one of the devotees got really fed up with me, and he said, what a naughty child you are. You can't even sit quiet for two minutes. Look, Swami is going to come out now. Today he has come and scold you. Swami scolding me? No, he will not scold me. I retorted, definitely today you are going to get scolding from Swami. No, Swami will not scold me. Do you want to see? In fact, Swami will call me for an interview, I said. <laughs> now this devotee looked at me, for you interview you will never get. He said, this is a challenge for me, this is a prestige question. <laughs> so here was little Dhruva sitting closed eyes 28 times Om Sri Sai Ram. <laughs> and evening Bhagavan beautifully came out of the interview room. He came in front of me. He looked at me and asked, hey, where is your father? I said, Swami, he's sitting over there. Go for an interview. I looked at the devotee next to me. <laughs> His eyeballs have almost come out of the socket. <laughs> no, I am not satisfied. Swami standing in front of me, I got up, stood and looked at him like this and walked to the interview room. This is how Swami placed 
the power of namasmarana in my heart in this world whatever you want god's name is the most powerful thing if you have god's name you can conquer anything and everything in this life swami put that seed of namasmarana in my young heart way back then so after finishing but at the same time i was my mischief continued being the bundle of energy only thing is i was very bad in my studies i could not concentrate on my studies with divine grace i managed to pass my 10th class with a third class and of course now what next you have to join some college father the local colleges they all know father they got lot of respect for my father so they all promise we will give you a seat don't worry about your son we will take care of it but i was not satisfied because my desire was how nice if i could get seat in swami's college so one day i ventured to tell my dad father i wanted to join swami's college father looked at me and said with your third class you dream of joining swami's college i said you don't worry that part you just help me you permit me rest of the thing i will take care you know om sri sai ram 28 times and believe it or not i got selected for swami's college after completing my 2 years of pre university classes swami commanded me to take chemistry botany and zoology for my bsc course so i was doing that i completed that also now what next those were the days in brindavan the good old brindavan brother baskar can tell you much more than me and those were the good old days in brindavan everything we used to our whole life it used to be centered around swami all our education was secondary for us but don't follow it now that was those days <laughs> it was centered around swami and everything we used to ask swami what to do so those were the days in swami's college the post graduation classes have not yet started but swami out of his infinite mercy and love he used to allow the boys to stay in the hostel and to go to the central college in bangalore bangalore university for the post graduation and come back so each of us applied and in bangalore university each of the department used to start on different days it is not a, like a common reopening day like june 1st so each of the department used to start at their own time so the first day of the college reopening we had the golden good fortune of going to swami taking his pada namaskar seeking his permission for the first day in the college swami asked me what subject did you get before i could answer swami said a ni philosophy cheste baaguntara if you do philosophy it will be nice philosophy i can't even spell it properly <laughs> now swami is giving me do philosophy my god what is this but i did not answer anything i took pada namaskar went to the college and during the interval time i searched where the philosophy department went to the department saw the notice board luckily for me they have closed all the admission one week prior to that and classes have already started i left a sigh of relief <laughs> so came back confidently back to brindavan that day next day morning every day we used to take pada namaskar before going to the classes what a great opportunity get god's pada namaskar every day before going to college it was worth it so second day when and then i was taking the namaskar i thought swami has forgotten the previous day's question there comes again hey what is your subject swami said new philosophy cheste baundi again second time swami is telling do philosophy i said swami i went and so admission is closed 
Swami looked at me and said, Poi Adugu, go and ask. I said, going and asking which university is going to give you admission. See, first of all, you should minimum have a degree in, in that particular subject, then possibly you can do the post-graduation. I didn't even have a, I am a science graduate. How can I directly jump into philosophy and do it? Swami said, go and ask. So I was so confident that I'm not going to get. But this is the second time Swami is repeating the same question to me. So I decided Swami really wanted me to do philosophy. So I said, Swami, if by chance I don't get, then I, th I thought wise enough and I told Swami, shall I do privately? That is, stay in the hostel, you learn and go and write the examination. Swami said, looked at me sternly and if you don't get, do privately. So Swami was bent upon me doing philosophy. That day I went to the department and went to the philosophy department. It was wide open. So I knocked at the door, went inside and the professor was sitting there. I cleared my throat and said, sir, I am very much interested in philosophy. The next sentence he looked at me and said, you are welcome to the department. <laughs> I said, sir, 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 wait, wait a minute. I am a science graduate. I have absolutely no idea of philosophy. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I said, sir, I don't have an application form. Doesn't matter. <laughs> then I said, Sir, I have already joined another department. I have already paid the fees. No problem at all. From tomorrow, you can come and attend the classes. When God decides something, nothing in this world can come in the way. So I came back to Brindavan. I came back to Brindavan and went inside Swami's room. Swami was just rela relaxing on his coach. And uh, so I just, Swami looked at me, Emira, what happened? Swami asked, Swami, by your grace, I got into philosophy. Chappan I told you already, you know. Swami said. That is how I got into philosophy. But it was too much for me. It was such an abstract subject. And I could not follow anything at all. My grades started going down and down and down in each and every examination. And the all-knowing Lord is to come and ask, How is your philosophy? Full philosophy. Full philosophy. <laughs> so, this was the situation. And here is a strange subject I am struggling with. During that period of time, during it was Dasara, we all went to Prashantinilayam. And when we went to Prashantanilayam, Swami called us all the, some of the senior boys for an interview with one of the guests. And um, Swami is always proud of his children. So whenever the guest used to come, whether it is governor of Karnataka or the, always Swami wants to project his boys. If some good singers are there, Swami used to say, you know, this boy is the grandson of M.S. Subbalashmi, Swami will say. So Swami is just, Swami is proud and Swami is wanted to especially showcase his boys. So like that, Swami looked at me. I know, I just put my, I was praying that Swami should not say. Swami said, this boy, MA philosophy, first rank gold medal, Swami said. <laughs> I, I couldn't even face Swami. I just put my head down and praying, Swami, please don't take away whatever little respect I have. <laughs> so this was the situation. So I just put my head down and I was praying. But whenever God says something, nothing can stop it, as I told you. When my final exam results came, it was first rank gold medal for the entire university. All glory to God. Sadhvikhi lilaya proktam shila likhita maksharam asadhvihi shapade napi jalair likhita maksharam. There's a beautiful Sanskrit couplet which says that the great ones 
even casually playfully they say something it is like engraving on a rock shilalikhitam aksharam whereas the lowly ones even if they tell an oath it is like writing on water when god decides something he never swami never says something playfully whatever he says it is the veda vani and after finishing my ma philosophy i came back in 1982 in prashant nilayam of course the philosophy department was not there so swami commanded me to go and teach vedam for all the children in the higher secondary school that is how n mass learning of the vedam started from 1982 so i was teaching all the students in, uh, in the higher secondary school till then only few boys used to learn vedas and used to chant the vedas later it was during that period of time after around 83 there was a need for sanskrit teacher in the higher secondary school so the principal went and approached swami swami we need a sanskrit teacher in higher secondary school swami said that vedanarayan is sitting there jobless take him now regarding my sanskrit i have to tell you something in my school days in my 8th grade my father he wanted me to learn sanskrit so much so with his influence he managed to get a sanskrit teacher for our school but it was a disastrous subject for me i couldn't make out the head and tail of it all the time i was cursing myself and i remember that after my 10th class examination coming back home and i told father for your sake i took this subject never again in my life i am going to touch this sanskrit <laughs> now this is my background okay so when principal called me and told i have good news for you what sir swami has told he has to he is going to send you for teaching sanskrit i said what you mean sanskrit no way because that is one subject i hate most and i don't know anything about it honestly i don't know anything but with swami you had to be very very careful you had to be mentally prepared so what i did i went and borrowed some books from the higher secondary school to find out what the syllabus is like i could not make anything out of it so safely i closed it gave it back to them and quickly wrote off a letter to swami defense better to so it seems swami you have told principal that you are going to send me for teaching sanskrit i don't know anything in sanskrit swami because of my ignorance i don't want the students to suffer but if you are very very particular that i should teach sanskrit give me the lower most classes because the all the 10th and 12th class 12th grade it is the national examination so i wrote this letter to swami so i mean out of his mercy he took the letter read the letter he folded it and kept it i felt very happy because swami did not say anything almost one month passed i was enjoying his darshan every day again that fateful day swami came out of the interview room and principal was there with a file he was sitting there he got up and said swami we need a sanskrit teacher i have already told where he is swami look hey come here he said <laughs> so i went in front of him i was looking pitifully at him swami real mercy swami said go and teach sanskrit before i could utter a word take pada namaskar he said <laughs> i took pada namaskar and i got up then the merciful lord told me start with lower classes <laughs> all right so concession is there <laughs> then i said swami went to join swami just thought for a while and said join on the vinayaka chaturthi day vinayaka chaturthi you all know it is a national holiday in india <laughs> so swami said go and join on the vinayaka chaturthi day i went and told principal sir swami told me to join on vinayaka chaturthi day 
no problem i am going to call all the students that day to the school you can start the classes but miraculously something happened from that very day vinayaka chaturthi a subject i did not know anything anything by looking at it all things all the grammar i started understanding in no time that is the grace of the lord the moment he said take my pada namaskar nimitta matram bhavasavya saji he says in bhagavad gita you become a mere instrument do you think you are doing it take refuge in me sarva dharman parityajya maam ekam charanam braja aham tvam sarva paapebhyo mokheshyami surrender to me alone bhagavan is there to take care everything you think that you are doing this you are doing that you are nothing be a mere instrument and swami takes care of everything that is how i have been teaching sanskrit all three this number of years and it was during 1983 84 i was staying in prashant nilayam swami has given me in the old it is called the old hostel because first when the college started it is extension of east prashanti there was a small room is there so i was staying there and i used to lead a very rigorous life get up early in the morning at 2:30 have cold water bath do surya namaskar do the meditation do the japa always it was it was an amazing time totally focused on swami it was an amazing time and during that period of time my health was perfectly well i did not have any problem and due to the seasonal changes now and then if i is to have some kind of uh, i mean uh, health issues like cold and cough i used to take little swami's vibhuti and that's it everything used to be fine and it was during that period of time it all started with a diarrhea next day vomiting and high fever see i for one would never never ever want to miss swami's darshan in fact that is the greatest wealth today i have i think almost every day morning and evening if i am there in prashant nilayam i had that day swami's darshan i never missed even one darshan so because this was too much for me i could not go for swami darshan for two continuous days then i sent a letter to swami swami i am suffering from high fever and vomiting and diarrhea look at swami's compassion swami that time called mr kudumbarao who was in charge of prashant nilayam then swami called him and said see this boy is suffering why don't you take one doctor and show so doctor came that day kudumbrao to that old hostel and the doctor uh, examined me and asked uh, so for how long are you having i said uh, last 3 days sir last 3 days what medicine did you take i took swami's vibhuti sir he said what swami's vibhuti what is wrong with you you are all educated class do you think only by eating swami's vibhuti you are going to get cured like this so kudumbara was more cleverer he said you know along with uh, swami's vibhu if you take medicine along with swami's vibhuti the vibhuti will act as a catalyst so you will get cured fast good so the next day what had happened the doctor has to go and report to swami and he went and told swami swami the boy is having last 3 days diarrhea and vomiting and high fever and he has not taken any medicine he is eating only your vibhuti all knowing lord mind you bhagavan is the doctor of doctors he is the lawyer of lawyers he knows everything but when a person who has studied a particular knowledge a branch and who has got a degree when he comes and says swami this is the right thing to do swami says yes 
So Swami said, did he do that? Very, very wrong. So Swami also added to the fuel. Also the doctor came, he was very upset with me. He said, I have to take you to the hospital, general hospital. So that was the, that was the Shivaratri time. And the previous Shivaratri, they have just opened, it was a small building. Before the hospital was on the mountain top, that had just shifted to the new building. On the Shivaratri day, Swami had opened that. So he has shifted me to that hospital room. And on the Shivaratri day, the hospital was completing the first anniversary and Swami had told them that I am going to come to hospital. So, I was admitted in the hospital. It was on the Shivaratri day, Swami did come to the hospital and he came straight to the room where I was lying. He came and said, you fellow, you deserve it. You deserve it. When you are sick, you don't take medicine. Swami then said, you, you don't, you eat only vibhuti. I said, Swami, give me prasadam. <laughs> For you, I'll never give you, he said. He scolded me nicely. Then he went to the other room where the doctors have arranged. Those were the good old days that Swami used to even allow to do Pada Puja. So the doctors have asked, Swami has asked, what do you want for first anniversary? They said, Swami, we wanted to do your Pada Puja. Then Swami said, yes. So those were the good old days Swami used to sit and they used to wash Swami's feet nicely and they used to apply the sandal paste. And just imagine God sitting in front of you and doing the Ashtottara Nama of the Lord. After finishing almost half an hour it took, the loving Lord came back to my room again. And this time he got me one grapefruit. He said, open your mouth, he said, all his anger. I opened my mouth and he put it in my mouth and he went back to the mandir. They were giving me continuous drip. So my diarrhea had stopped, fever has abated. But I was feeling miserable. Without having darshan, sitting in the hospital, what am I going to do? So I asked the doctors, don't you think I am all right now? They said, yes. Then why don't you discharge me? They also felt it is okay, so they discharged me. After going to Mandir, I wrote a letter to Swami. Swami, by your grace, I have become all right. Now I have, they have discharged me and I have come back. And those days, Brother uh, Vijay Bhaskar, remember, whenever we wanted to give a letter to Swami, you write the letter to Swami, directly walking into the interview room, open the door, Whoever is there, you hand over the letter, immediately it has to be taken to Swami. Any number of letters any, in any day, just imagine the chance what we had. We are the VVVVIPs, if you say. So that is the type, how Swami used to look after us. So I sent this letter, I wrote a letter, it was around after, around 10 o'clock, when Swami was inside the room, I went and straight away gave the letter and it was taken to Swami. Swami read the letter. And he sent me a strange message. Till then, Swami was providing me free food from the canteen. Swami said, whatever you want, you go and eat in the canteen, I will pay for you, you don't worry. So that was the, this thing Swami. Swami sent me a message saying that, ask him not to eat in the canteen. His parents are here. At that time, parents had just moved over to Prashantinilayam. Swami had given them a room. Swami said, let him go and eat in the house. Ask him to be very careful about his diet. Let him take only bland food. I was started wondering, why Swami is giving all these instructions? I am perfectly all right now. After all, it was a diarrhea and vomiting. Why so much? But Swami knew the best. Within one week, my fever shot up. And there was excruciating pain on the lower abdomen. All continuous vomiting and also diarrhea. So, doctor came and told, I have to shift you back into the hospital. I was shifted back into the hospital and they found that I was suffering from malignant malaria, which has effect, affected my liver. And in turn, the pain was so excruciating, the liver has bloated up. So, they found that the medical record, even today they have kept, they say that liver has stopped working. No, they started decomposing inside. This was the situation. 
and the pain was so excruciating. So I had high fever and to top it all, both my kidneys failed. There was no urine secretion at all for 36 hours. So I knew that my condition is quite bad. I asked the student who was helping me in the hospital, just get me a pen and paper. Lying down, I wrote a letter to Swami, most dearest Bhagavan, I think my last days have come. I am not afraid of death because one day everyone has to die. But I have only one prayer in my heart. Before I close my eyes, Swami, just give me one darshan of yours. I don't want anything else in this life. I send that letter. Next day, I fell into a coma. Now, this was told to me by the student who was helping me. The doctors were discussing, the superintendent of the hospital and another doctor, superintendent felt that there is no point in keeping me in the hospital because it was not such an advanced hospital. They want to send me to Bangalore. Bangalore. But the other doctor said, there is no point in sending to Bangalore because he is hardly going to leave for another few hours. Having stayed in Prashantin Alayam, let him die in Prashantin Alayam. Why do you want to send him? He will die on the way. So this was the conversation between the superintendent and the other doctor, which was overheard by the boy who was helping me. He went for darshan in the morning. And when Swami came, he boldly got up and told Swami, Swami, Vedana Ryan is going. Swami asked, where? <laughs> Swami, I heard the doctor saying that, that he will not survive. Then Swami called one of the doctors who was sitting in the veranda and asked him, how is that boy? He said, Swami, forgive us. Our medical science cannot do anything for that boy. His liver has completely gone. His kidneys have totally failed. Now, if you interfere, he may live. Otherwise, there is absolutely no chance of his living. This is what the doctor reported to Swami. Swami, many times he has said, my love for you is like that of a thousands of mothers. You cannot possibly understand one mother's love. How can you possibly understand thousands of mothers' love? I came to know that Swami did not even have food that day. Immediately after bhajan, though both his drivers were absent that day, Swami called one of the sevadals and said, bring me a car. He straight away came to the hospital. He came to near my bed. I was semi-conscious. Swami said, hey, Vedana and open your eyes, I have come. I opened my eyes, I saw the beautiful form of the Lord in front of me. Swami waved his hand, created Vibhuti, he unbuttoned the shirt and he applied the Vibhuti on the liver which was protruding out. Then Swami did not want to discuss my case in front of me, he called all the doctors to the next room. He started asking each and every doctor, what is your diagnosis? What is your diagnosis? Then one of the doctors says, Swami, his, for 36 hours he has not secreted urine and it is in a very dangerous state. Swami said, why you people did not inform me before? Then Swami said, do whatever you can, we should not lose the boy. After saying that, Swami came back to the room. Why I am telling all these details is, for some of you, how it will be to be with Swami, to just to give you the taste of it. Swami came back to the room. There was absolutely, his royal throne was not there. He was, nothing else was there other than my cot, which was towards a wall. Swami literally shifted me towards the wall and he sat on the patient's cot. Just imagine the compassion of the Lord and he held my hand. I said, Swami, I cannot take anything orally. They used to give me a spoonful of coconut water and I used to vomit it out with basins full of bile because the liver had completely gone. 
again and again they used to feed me. Swami, I cannot take anything orally, he said. Swami said, who said? Come on, give me that coconut water. Swami took it in his hand. He gently parted my mouth and my lips and poured the entire coconut water into my mouth and it went inside. So beautifully you are drinking, Swami is saying. Come on, give me more. But it was not there. One of the doctors had the presence of mind. She went and took some distilled water, put some glucose and gave it in Swami's hand. Swami made me drink again. And so lovingly he said, whenever you have vomiting sensation, put an ice cube in your mouth, you will not vomit. Swami said, I will go to Mandir, I will send you one Viva bottle, I will send you an electrode, keep drinking that. Look at the compassion of the Lord. In that particular duration of time, every moment I used to get one injection. So, almost 36 bottles of saline have gone inside. I told Swami, I cannot take any more injection, Swami, it is too much for me. Then Swami said, doctors buddhi ledu. No common sense for doctors. You come and prick my child so much, when you fall sick, I will bring such big, big noodles and needles and I will prick all of you, Swami said. So that was the love of the Lord. Then Swami said, just check his blood pressure. Then one of the doctors came and checked my blood pressure. It was very high, like 200 and uh, by 150. Or, Swami said, it's too high. Perfect blood pressure should be 120 by 80. And Swami smilingly said, just, just check my BP, how much it is. And in front of us, the doctor put that and check the BP, it was 120 by 80. See, see my BP, it is perfect. That is how, with so much of love, for half an hour, Swami spent in the hospital, then said, you will be all right, don't worry. Then, Bhagavan went to Mandir. This again I was told, there, again my students and the other staff, they were waiting there. Swami went and told them, do you know? With all seriousness, Bhagavan said, I went to hospital, Vedanarayan is dead. So, all are stunned and they were looking, hey, when I am here, how can he die there? Look at the compassion of the Lord. <laughs> Swami had told the doctor that they should go and report about my condition every day. The next, after Swami left, within half an hour, my kidney started functioning normally. Now, but next day, something else happened. My entire body has turned yellow. Because my liver has gone, I, am, I was suffering from deep jaundice. The whole body has turned yellow. So, when the superintendent early in the morning went and reported to Swami, Swami the boy is suffering from jaundice. Swami waved his hand and created a beautiful lemon. Swami said, put it in the milk, make whey water. That you, in the medical parlance, you have to remove the fat of the milk and that the thin water should be. Swami said, give this and he will be. So, they were making me drink that. Within two days time, the loving Lord came back to the hospital again. He came to the room. This time, of course, there was a folding iron chair which was kept there. Swami pulled that. He sat there. Of course, to keep his lotus feet, that beautiful footstool was not there. He lifted, the, he lifted his feet and put it on the cot and he relaxed and sat. He created vibhuti and he applied again. And he almost spent half an hour assuring me that I'll be all right. And even after this second visit of Swami, still my fever was going very, very high. It was unable to control. It was during that period of time, I had a dream of Swami in the hospital. See, for me, usually I don't get any dream. Neither good, bad, neither Swami's dream or nothing I get. But Swami has said that, whenever Swami comes in the dream, only with his sankalpa, you can have Swami's dream. Even if you imagine, you cannot have Swami's dream. Unless Swami wants to convey something to you, Swami comes in the dream. In the dream, I found that I have become perfectly all right and I have been discharged from the hospital 
And that day, night, from 1982, Swami gave few of us the golden opportunity to sleep every day, night, next to his room in the mandir. So as usual with the other boy, I had gone upstairs to do my duty. So usually at night, Swami keep his door closed. That day in the dream, I find that all the doors to the bedroom, leading to the bedroom of Swami, it is open. There was light in his room. And the moment Swami saw me outside, Swami got up his bedroom, straight he came, came outside. With all, you know, the amount of joy in his face, Oh, have you come back? I said, Swami, by your grace, I am perfectly all right now. Swami said, very happy, take Padanamaskar. I took Swami's Padanamaskar, Swami went back, something strange I saw. Because the cot I could see, there was no pillow, absolutely nothing was there except a quilt. And Swami went and sat on the bed and Swami was shivering. Swami was shivering, nothing to cover. So whatever the quilt which was there on the cot, he was trying to take that and he was trying to cover. I asked the boy next to me, what is wrong? Swami is not well. And the boy told me, you know, from morning, from this morning, Swami is suffering from malaria. In my dream, I found that, that day morning, I have been discharged. Now, though old, good old days, Swami used to take up other people's disease and He used to suffer. Because it is our karma that, whether, whether we, we get diseases, it is because of our previous karma. But when we get disease, what do we do? We cry out to God, God, please save me, please save me. How long a mother can hear the cry? So, somebody has to, the law of karma, some, he cannot, he, Swami says, I will never interfere because I have made the rule. So, somebody has to suffer. So, Swami is to take upon himself and suffer. This was a shock for me. And from the dream, when I opened my eyes, I was still in the hospital. I could not take the dream. I started crying and crying so loudly that doctors from downstairs came running upstairs. What happened? I told them I had a dream like this. Morning, first thing, go and plead with Swami that Swami should not do this. Swami should not take. I know this is my karma which I have to undergo, but I don't want Swami to suffer. They told, no, no, it's only a dream. Go to sleep, go to sleep. And slowly I was crying and crying and crying and slowly I went back to sleep and the dream continued from where it left. I was standing and crying upstairs. Swami kept on looking at me. Suddenly he got up. He came. When he came out, I ran towards him. I hugged his feet and said, Swami, please don't do this. I know that this is my karma which I have to undergo. But I don't want you to suffer, Swami. Please, please. Then Swami said, Hey, I still remember. Swami looked at me and said, Ee deha ki e mundra. What is there for this body? I can take anything like this and leave it like this. You cannot do it. Take my Padanamaskar, he said. <laughs> I took his Padanamaskar and the dream ended. The next day morning, my fever touched normal. Bhagavan again came to the hospital for a third visit. Now, Bhagavan came to my room, created Vibhuti and applied the Vibhuti and said, now onwards, you can have normal food. Then, Bhagavan, the next day, of course, Swami went off to Uti. But here, one thing I wanted to recollect is, dear sisters and brothers, just imagine here is a lesson for so many of them. For the doctor who said that, is Vibhuti going to cure you? You are not taking any medicine. Now, what is that which really cured me? Is it the medicine or is it the Vibhuti? So, when this is a lesson for many of the people, when they couldn't do anything, they said that medical science, Swami, we cannot do anything. 
now you have to interfere with his life so that is how if i am standing here in front of you today it is because of the bhiksha of life what he has given in my hands and it will be ungrateful on my part if i cannot serve him back with the life bhiksha what he has given me how much more time is there during that period of time my father was visiting me in the hospital he was around 75 years old then he was one day he was coming to the hospital suddenly he felt giddy during that period of time he fell down he tried to get up he could not so he also had to be brought to the hospital in a stretcher and when they x-rayed it they saw that he had he had broken the neck of femur bone in the that means in that age even if you operated he cannot walk at all he has to rest of his life he has to continue in a wheelchair and in swami's hospital at that time there was no orthopedic department so they felt that it is better father is taken to the hospital in bangalore during that period of time swami has already left for uti so i had to who else will take nobody else is there so father on one bed and myself on other bed in a van we are taken to the hospital in swami hospital in brindavan also at that time there was no orthopedic department my brother was then working in the military so for his parents he could get the medical service so we had to take him to the bangalore military hospital so in the the doctor saw and said that he has to undergo a surgery he has to undergo a surgery but uh, they cannot promise whether he can walk or not so what else so i wrote a letter to swami swami we have nobody other than you father also has fallen down and he has broken his bone swami they say that he has to undergo a surgery swami you only have to bless i had sent the letter and the day of surgery was fixed and just before taking him to the theater they decided that they will take some x ray and see they took one x ray second x ray third x ray they could not find where the breakage was and father walked out of the hospital this is the lord who is with us what he cannot do kartum akartum anyatha kartum shakya whatever he want he can get it done that way only thing is what swami asks swami asks in turn only your love and love and love alone every moment of our life it is don't ever think that because i had the physical proximity swami took care of me absolutely no each and every one of you the moment you call sairam he is there in front of you it is just there in front of you it is faster than your mobile call at least few numbers you have to press there here just say sairam and sairam is there holding your hand innumerable number of instances innumerable it is not that physically swami is not there now you don't have the opportunity why just yesterday i am just coming to bangalore to come over here you know that the flight ticket is booked and basic thing what you should have is a photo identity so i had my driving license in the i just came from the school after finishing the school so the taxi has already come in a hurry bari i just got into the car and the car has left and it is going out of the gopuram gate my phone is ringing why so it is from my home the server maid she has called me i said what happened he said you have left your wallet here where i have left usually i carry the wallet in the my school bag so in the hurry bari i have come and kept the school bag on the cot 
had my food and I have started. So she said, the school bag is on the cot. Why it should be there? Let me keep it in its proper place. When she has taken the bag, can you imagine from the bag, from the bag, how can a thing just jump out? She say, the valet just jumped out of this and I say that this is your valet. And she calls and says, come on, here is the valet. Imagine without that, even if it had, if it had crossed almost like half an hour I would have driven, again I would have not realized it, but even I could have not come here. So to the minutest extent, to what an extent God can take care of us, I'll tell you. Every moment, see, every, remember that every moment of our life is a miracle. Only thing is, God does not stand there and says, waiting like our human being, you know, tell me thanks, tell me thanks. No. It is our duty to see Lord's hand and say, Lord, this is you. And thank him. Why? Back in, I think it was in, uh, I don't clearly remember the year. I was coming from the, after the summer vacation, I was coming to Brindavan. I had the flight from Detroit from Detroit to um, Frankfurt and next day, summer, summer schools were starting in Vrindavan. So I was coming for that. <laughs> My brother brought and left me in Detroit and I had a, uh, this thing, they announced that there is a hurricane in the, this one, um, in the Chicago. So they, it has to, uh, first I had to go to Chicago and from there the connecting flight. So they said, no flights are leaving. It is delayed for three to four hours. So that day, what had happened? I told my brother, you go ahead. Anyway, I'm the airport. Whenever the flight goes, I'll go and catch the next flight. But that day, first it was delayed for one hour, two hours. Then ultimately, when I reached Chicago, the flight had already left. Now I did not know what to do. I wanted to come for summer course so badly. So I went and asked them, I told them that I have to go. They said, we are very sorry, sir. Today, absolutely no flights are available. Tomorrow evening, we will put you by the first flight, but you cannot go today. Now, I am helpless. So I said, what, what am I supposed to do? They said, we have booked a hotel for you. You go and take rest there. And tomorrow by evening you can come. You need not pay anything, sir. You just go down, there will be a shuttle service will be there which will take you. So, well, I went there waiting for the shuttle service which never came. One hour, all the other hotels, shuttle services are coming except this. Because they have given me a hotel called Hotel D. Hilton. There was a Hilton hotel just outside the O'Hare airport. So I I fed up of waiting. I went there and told, give me the accommodation here. They said, sorry sir, it is not here. You have to go to the city. I said, salt chain of hotel, you give it here. They said, sorry, we cannot do. We will... Then I, they connected me to that hotel. I asked, I am waiting for the uh, shuttle bus, but nothing is coming. What is wrong? Then they said, we are sorry sir. At 10 o'clock at night, we stop all the shuttle services. So from morning 7 o'clock only, we will start the service again. So I said, I got a reservation with you. What am I supposed to do? They said, you take a cab and come. Now. So I requested the lady at the counter, can you book a cab for me? She said, yes. Within two minutes, the cab did come. But he said, sir, I am going urgently for another pickup. Can you go by the next cab, which is just coming behind? He gave me a number. All right. I waited, the other cab never came. Now, all start of mixed feelings started going in my head and I called my brother who was in Ohio and said, I got stranded like this. He said, don't lose heart. Don't, what are you planning to do? I said, I'm trying to take a cab and go to the hotel. He says, don't ever do that. You are all alone. Because Chicago, the crime rate is very high. It is not advisable for you to go alone in the car. If you listen to my advice, just stay in the airport itself. Early morning, go to the hotel. Still you have time to leave and you can rest and come. So Swami was preventing me to getting into any of the cabs. So I said, all right, 
I put the luggage next to me, sat there, now I have to spend time till morning. I was thinking in my mind, Swami, why did it happen? This is what usually, everything goes well, we will never ask Swami that, Swami, why everything is going well? If something goes wrong, we'll ask, what happened, Swami, why have you deserted? Only at that time, the thoughts will come. So here I am, what, I didn't do anything wrong, why, Swami, this type of complication should come? And I was thinking, suddenly, I was thinking, I, I remembered a story told by Swami, he says, Whatever happens in your life, think that it is for your good. And if you have that positive thought, even the worst circumstances, if you think that it is for my good, it is for your good, definitely good will come out of it. I said, all right. So, that thought came to me, why I should take negatively? Shivaratri comes only once in a year. Here is a chance for me to keep awake the whole night and chant God's name. So, sat there, sitting with my luggage and I started chanting Swami's, sorry, I was chanting Gayatri. Continuously I was chanting Gayatri. Now and then I'll get distracted by the people, those who come and go and it was almost midnight, around two o'clock at night. The whole place is deserted. Now what else? All alone, sitting there and doing the Namasmarana. Suddenly I saw a black man coming from far. You know the typical way in which uh, they always walk to a tune which nobody can hear. So, he came and stood and stared at me up and down. He was wearing a black t-shirt, black pant, he was totally in black and I was in totally in white. <laughs> so, he looked at me and said, why are you sitting here? He asked. I said, I missed my flight. I got a hotel accommodation. So, no shuttle bus, so I am sitting here. He said, follow me, he said. Follow you? What is that? So, I was praying to, I always feel that Swami is with us, Swami is with us. So, I said, what is this Swami, what is happening? Swami said, go. So, imagine I took my luggage and I am just walking behind this strange man. And he was taking me to a place, all the parking lot, not a single soul. All car parking lot is there. After that, the bus parking lot is there. He took me there. He showed me an empty bus and he told, get into it. So, I took the luggage, put it inside. Without telling me a single word, this man started driving off in full speed. And almost like 45 minutes he was driving. I was just looking around. It is so airy and uh, it was... It was so fearful, but at the same time, I was chanting Gayatri and suddenly in the middle of the road, he stops. He puts the brake and say, in that distance, he showed, that is your hotel. I don't want to come inside, you get down here, he says. So I said, okay. I got down from the bus. Now I want to turn back and say, at two o'clock at night, who will take the trouble of taking you? I was also in the bus, a 30-seater bus, to your destination. When I turned back, there was no bus, there was no driver. This is the fact. <laughs> this is the amazing thing God can do. I couldn't believe myself. I thought that probably I would have sat on the chair and slept off. But no, I can see the hotel over there. Then, I went inside the hotel. Tears of gratitude, that only I can give back to the Lord. Who else can take care of you like this? Who else can take care of you like this? Every moment of our breath is taken care of by Him. So lovingly, so tenderly, I went into the hotel, checked into the hotel, slept well because I didn't want to call my brother and disturb him again. And early morning when I called him, he said, are you getting ready to go to the hotel? I said, what shall I say? Swami brought me in his own unimaginable way to the hotel. This is how Swami has been 
taking care of me no not me alone all of you each one of you shuka brahma rishi wrote only one bhagavatam if today bhagavatam has to be written each and every one of you can write bhagavatam so dear sisters and brothers it is the greatest golden opportunity which has come in our lives we have become the contemporaries of the avatar and mind you what greater fortune one can have in life never in the history of the mankind that is why in the beginning itself swami has never touched so many lives there was avatars and avatars but లైక్ దిస్ అవతార్ సత్య సాయి అవతార్ న భూదో న భవిష్యది ఇట్ విల్ నెవర్ హ్యాపన్ లైక్ దిస్ దెర్ ఈస్ ఓన్లీ వన్ సత్య సాయి అవతార్ అండ్ హీస్ ది ఓన్లీ వన్ థ్యాంక్ యూ సో మచ్ ఫర్ యువర్ పేషెన్స్ అండ్ ఐఎమ్ రియలీ గ్రేట్ఫుల్ ఫర్ హ్యావింగ్ గివన్ మీ దిస్ వండర్ఫుల్ ఆపర్చునిటీ టు షేర్ దిస్ లవ్ స్టోరీ ఆఫ్ మై లార్డ్ విత్ మీ Thank you so much for your patience. God bless you. Thank you. Sai Ram. Sai Ram.